Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Well, we've got another mixed day of uh, everything coming in good. We've got some adequate solar, uh, we're catching some rain, so it's the best of both worlds again. Water tank is overflowing, and the solar batteries are getting all charged up. So we're going to wander up to the Bungaloha and show you what we're going to do today. But... Yeah, love a mixed bag day. So today I wanted to go over how to set your QWork battery monitor. This is like a fuel gauge for your batteries that you've got tied into your solar system. And you can see that it is charging right now, uh, as indicated by that triangle in the plus pointing up and the battery uh, display going up as well. And here is what the shunt itself looks like. And on this bottom cable, this is the B negative or battery negative side of the shunt. And this is the P negative, which comes up into a bus bar there. And then this one, of course, goes to the negative side of the battery. So it's a real easy hookup. And then there's a little for the display. Uh, this plugs in, and then there's a little teeny wire right there, that little red one that goes up to my positive bus bar. And that takes a very, very small gauge wire. I believe that's like a 22, very, very small. And you really need a battery gauge such as this or something similar to give you a true uh, battery capacity percentage to be displayed. Uh, chasing lithium iron phosphate uh, capacity is very difficult without a battery monitor, if not impossible. So it's good to have one of these to know exactly what your fuel tank is looking like. And in order to get an accurate read, you have to tell this battery monitor what size battery you're running. And when I first set this up, uh, I had forgot to do that and it only showed a 100 amp hour uh, capacity in there, but I actually have 200 amp hours of capacity available here because I tied two 100 amp hours in parallel to make a 200 amp hour battery. So now I need to go in here while it's charging and reprogram this for 200 amp hours. And the first thing I'll show you is how to take this light display off. Uh, a couple of you have asked me how to do that. Um, I know sometimes when I'm filming and the light is on, it kind of washes out a little bit on the camera. And if you just simply press this right button and the left button and hold them at the same time, the light display will go off. And there you can see a lot clearer. Uh, at least on camera. I leave the light on myself on all of my monitors because I like to be able to walk into a room when it's dark and you can see it just perfectly clear. So, uh, But it is clearer in the daytime uh, and for filming purposes. But anyway, that's how... And then to turn it back on, it's just simply the opposite. This button and this button, hold them down at the same time briefly and the light display comes back on. So that's real easy to do. And then to toggle through the other uh, set points, if you want to see voltage, it's just one press of the left button. Shows you the battery bank voltage, 13.42. And if you want to go back to the percentage, you just press the right one one time, 63.7. And then on the center button, it's for amps and amp hour set. So right now it's showing 10 amps under fast moving conditions, 11 amps. You see it change according to the sunshine conditions right there and shows how many amps are coming into this battery bank right now. So uh, it's a little cloudy and fast moving clouds and then inter intermittent bright sun. So you can see how fast it's moving. I'll show you that on the Victron uh, energy display as well. And it matches up with that pretty well. So that's amps coming in. You press that again and it shows you the uh, amp hours uh, remaining 
in that battery bank. Now, like I said, I originally had this mistakenly set for 100 amp hours when I first set this up, and I've gone back and changed it to 200 amp hours, but I wanna make sure that I get it completely reset to that value, um, and I'm gonna have to wait till this battery gets fully charged to do that, to make sure that I am really there. So 27 amps coming in right now, looking pretty good. The percentage keeps running up. So looking at the Victron display now, that 400 watt array that I've got tied in there, and that is that uh, flexible portable array from NERSV is again, exceeding its output. But again, the panels are cool right now because of the weather. It's a little cool today. And when the clouds roll by, uh, the panels cool off even more than that. Now the sun of course is coming out nice and shooting well over 400 Watts. And then there's a cloud rolling by and the Victron just tracks it as fast as the conditions are changing. But let's see how the other parameters match up with the Victron here. So let's go up here and let's go back to, let's go to battery voltage, 13.58, Victron reading it at 13.76. So a little discrepancy. Now it's 13.6 and 13.7. So, you know, pretty close, especially under these conditions. And let's look at the amps coming in. 27.6. Of course, the Victron is so quick. And now it drops down with the clouds. It's almost hard. It's changing so fast, it's hard for me to keep up. But anyway, very, very close. You know, 10 amps. 11 amps. The Victron's very, very quick. This might not be as quick, but still, you can see they're pretty close. So now let's go in and tell this uh, battery monitor how big of a battery bank I'm gonna be dealing with here. So I know I've got a 200 amp hour battery bank. Press that middle button and hold it and it shows 196 amp hours. Click the right until you get to where you want, 200 amp hours, and then just press set. So now I have told this battery monitor that I'm dealing with a 200 amp hour bank. And now what I have to do is let this go to the full charge today, and hopefully it will get there today, but if not, the next time it gets to a very full charge, all I have to do is press uh, this right button one time and it will tell it that it's 100% full at 200 amp hours. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I will wait until the Victron has done its magic and run this battery up to 14.2 and held it there uh, on its preset lithium iron phosphate profile. And then I will know that I have a completely full battery and I will come back here and press this right button one time and it'll know that it's 200 amp hours at 100% full. But I have to wait now to do that until this battery is completely full. And the Victron charge controller right here will take care of that for me. And it's pretty early in the day. Um, it's not the best solar charging conditions, but I could very well get up there today because you can already see I'm getting up to, you know, 13.6 volts. So, you know, if I can keep running a few hundred watts in there throughout the rest of the day, it's going to go all the way up uh, to completely full. And I will wait till it's at the uh, end of its absorption charge to go ahead and set this button right here at 100%. And all you have to do is press that and hold it and it'll change it from whatever it says to 100%. So that's what you have to do to make this battery gauge or battery monitor, I think of it as gas gauge. It shows you just like your vehicle gas gauge, exactly what you're dealing with. And it'll keep track of how many amp hours are left as well by just, you know, going through here to like there. So, you know, if you've got 200 amp hours and 
uh, overnight you took out 20 amp hours, uh, it'll read 180 in the morning. This thing is very, very accurate. It's very fairly priced. Uh, I have about four or five of these running and I just love them because I love at a just at a glance, I know exactly what I'm doing. And I usually just leave mine on the percentage so I know exactly how full my fuel tank is, so to speak. And I just love them. And like I said, I leave the light on, but for this purposes, to show you guys exactly what's going on, I've turned the light off. But I like it so at night I wander through a dark room, take a glance, and, and see everything's in great shape. So, yeah, that's how, how to program one of these things. Very, very easy. They're very good. And it comes with like about a 13-foot cable back in there that I haven't unwound at all. So you could, you know, place this in a convenient place for you to look at. You've got some room to, to place this monitor wherever you would like it. And like I said, when I originally set this up and hooked up the battery monitor, I had forgot to tell it, but it was a 200 amp hour battery we're dealing with because we've got two tied together to make that. Uh, it thought it was a 100 amp hour. So uh, I have since set it to 200 amp hours and I'm just waiting now for this to get fully charged with the Victron charge controller. And then I will go ahead and press that right button all the way on that side of it. And then I won't have to reset it, but because this is my workstation and I'm gonna be testing other batteries in here, every time I disconnect and reconnect a new battery for testing purposes or usage, uh, I will have to again tell this battery monitor what size battery i'm working with how many amp hours and then uh, of course the victron you don't have to program for that i mean it will just run it up to its 14.2 volts if you use the lithium iron phosphate profile and then once you hold that for a couple of hours it'll go into float at 13.5 so yeah, once I get to the top of the uh, absorption charge on this, I consider it 100% full. And then, you know, after you've got it programmed, it's just at a glance, you know exactly where you're at. You can monitor, like, how much you're using overnight. It'll give you a real good indication if you're sized appropriately, if you need another battery, need some more panels, whatever. It's a great way of keeping up with your system. You really got to have one of these to know what you're truly doing. I mean, chasing the voltage uh, on this and, and knowing what is 80% full, uh, what is 100% full, you really need the battery monitor to do that. But it works great together. You know, you can really see. You really need the, a good charge controller like a Victron and then a good battery monitor. Yeah, so I hope you guys found this video informative. Uh, for those of you, you know, going on to lithium iron phosphate for your batteries, you really need a battery monitor. This one, like I said, I've been using uh, this for years out here. It's about 40 bucks, something right along those lines all the time. Uh, very reasonably priced and works absolutely very well. I mean, under pristine conditions where I've got nice sustained sunshine, uh, where I can compare the Victron values to that, they, they match up very, very closely under the super fast moving conditions that I get with these clouds rolling through here very quickly. Uh, you know, the Victron keeps up a little bit faster, but you know, under a little more sustained activity, that monitor and the Victron are pretty much aligned all the time. Thanks for stopping by the Bungaloha today, everybody. I'll catch you on the next one. Aloha. Oh, I hear P. Come on, P. Come on, might rain. <laughs>